back up, and then uh, the second time, I don't know what the heck, I, I don't know what happened to me. I was not in the zone. I missed it again. So twice. I usually don't miss. And I two times, and then the guy's looking at me. It's like, hey, you son of a bitch, you do this again. You're going in after it. And I go, okay, I will go after it. So thank God the third time I got him in the stomach. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, a nice pitch, 26 pounder. That was just last week. So that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, Yeah, halibut, halibut in the net. Boy, that's another fun one. Um, you know, part of the reason why we got to use the nets, obviously, is, is there's a fish that's close. I mean, you don't want to gaff it and kill a 21 inch or, you know. Um, the other part of it is once you get, like, a bigger fish in the net, uh, then that's when all the fun starts. You know, <laughs> you know the halibut's going like this. It's going hog wild. So what I usually do is once I get it in there, um, First thing I do is get rid of uh, my trout. You know, I just cut my rig off like right away because unfortunately last year I ended up with one of these in my thumb. Now, it gets a little crazy out there. So that wasn't a fun surgery. But anyway, um, so usually when that happens, I use a rubber mallet. I just kind of whack them. You know, when I know they're keepers, you know, if they're not keepers, and obviously I got to wait until they kind of get out of there. Well, actually, my friend the other day, if I would have missed again, he probably would have hit me with a rubber mallet. That's for sure. But, uh, yeah, so that's how we do it. We knock them with the rubber mallet. But preferably, I mean, uh, obviously you want to use a gaff, even if you miss twice. Yeah, twice. That's cool. Um, oh, this is a funny one. i got to tell you, this is a quick story. Uh, so last year I, I was fishing on the Freedom. And uh, me and my friend uh, Gary, uh, Gary Kuda, some of you guys know him, we had both caught 32 pound yellowtails and we were going to win the jackpot, one of us, because they were so, the fish were so close, you know. This one kid was fishing the whole time and he was using squid eggs. And he was on Prozac and meth or some kind of mixture, we couldn't figure out which one it was, but uh, he was using squid eggs and he thought it was really cool. Was like, I don't know that much. So, we're at the last stop and I, I hear the captain, uh, town or whatever, and he says, hey, you know, we're leaving here in a second. This is it. You know, it's been a fun day. So I looked down, and the first time of the day, that kid, he grabbed a live squid. That was the first time all day. I mean, something had to be wrong. We had live squid in Christ's sake, right? So I look over at the kid, and I kid you not, he had 40, 45 pound fish. I don't know how big. All I know is, you know, it was massive. And I saw this freaking head hanging out of the water. This kid had fought the fish, and, and it didn't really wake up, you know? Well, sometimes the halibuts don't wake up. You know, sometimes they're just like, you know. But other times they get really mad, right? So he pulls the fish up, and he's got the fish just like this. Everybody's going nuts. The captain's screaming at him, the deckhands running down with the gas. Because nobody, you know, nobody knew the kid really had anything. I mean, we were, just, we were fishing in like 10, 12 feet of water. You know, so he, he pulls the thing up, and then now the kid, you should have saw this kid. I don't know what drugs they were, like I said, i got to clarify that. And, and he tries to bounce the fish. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, ping, pop goes the weasel, you know. And the kid just had me buried on the jackpot. It wasn't even close. I mean, what a fish, you know. And, uh, yeah, so that, that, was kind of, that was kind of a funny story. But, uh, let's see where else is. Any questions about anything? Or anybody has? My favorite bait? Uh, sardines and mackerels. The, the biggest ones I've personally hooked have been on mackerels. I mean, I love the fish mackerels. Um, and the trap rig on a mackerel is kind of fun. <laughs> They're, they're like, you know, like this all the time. Oh, that's the other thing about where I hooked the trap rig. I never really covered that. Um, I use the SSW Foro. Uh, that's the owner. Um, then I use the, the treble. I use the, the four. Um, and sometimes I'll even use a six o. To me, the hook size doesn't really matter. I mean, it's all personal preference. You know, some guys swear by the smaller ones, some guys don't. But I tell you, if you think the logic, like uh, when you fish sea bass and catlins as an example, most of those, uh, you know, white lead heads you use, I mean, what's the hook size on those things? I mean, six, seven, oh, you know, it's, 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 for me, it's that same logic with the halibut. I mean, they, they don't really care about that. They're predators, man. You know, they want to 
they want to just attack, man, and that's it. It's ambush and attack. Oh, that's the other thing about that video that uh, with eating the torpedo sinker. He also caught one halibut in the wild, and, and I learned a lot from that as well. How when the halibut comes in to the sandy area, it'll take its tail and kind of use it as, as a shovel. And it'll kind of grab the sand and flip it up over its body until it buries itself. And it's really camouflaged. It's amazing to see it. And I'm thinking, how does he know if he's completely buried? <laughs> if you think about it, you know. And he, but he just sits there and he shovels it up and he flips it over. And so a lot of guys, you know, like when they go to Kalani, if they got like a tuner tower or something, it's, it's a really good advantage because you can really sight fish. If you know what you're looking for, you got the good polarized lens, and you can look into the water. Some guys are really good at just looking down, and they're like, oh, there's a 30 pounder. Okay, let's kind of throw in a stealth mode and pull up and get that fish. So, yes, that's another really good way to go as well. Any other questions? Okay. Any answers? <laughs> What size mackerel? <laughs> Preferably, you know what? I mean, probably like eight, eight, nine inches from what I like. But I tell you, you know, I'm sure you've seen like a bigger halibut. If you look at the, the diameter yeah. of the mouth when it's open, you know, some people look at the baits and they say, oh, there's no way the halibut's going to get that mackerel in his mouth. But it, even like a 20 pounder, I mean, their, their mouths are yeah. that big. And so, uh, Probably like eight to nine inches is what I like because, oh, I didn't finish that other part of the, where you set the hook. Obviously, the, the first hook goes in the front mouth, and then the treble on a sardine is an example. I like to put it right above their exit thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you put it in the tail and it's always kicking, eventually it's going to kick it out. So if you put it up, you know, a little bit in front of it, right where, you know, where their backside is then obviously it doesn't have that tail kick as much, and so you more have to keep it in there. And you know, because otherwise you can fish the trap without it being a trap, and you're going to listen to the trap. Any other questions? Um, yes, but I'm not as good as Doug. He's a professional. <laughs> yeah, I fish him actually down in Cabrillo. Uh, I like to use the key line. Because that's what I learned from Doug. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really just when you look for the structure. I mean, kind of the same principle when you're out in the boat. I mean, usually what I look for when I'm looking for halibuts out in the open waters, I look for structure because, you know, that's where you're going to have the big concentrations. Um, where the soft and hard bottom meets a really good spot because, you know, they sit right in there and, and it's perfect camouflage for, you know, when that baits are just all happy, you know, being in this hard bottom messing around, and then they come over the top, and then they get whacked. Um, uh, but for the plastic, I mean, it's the same thing. You look for the structure, and then just kind of work all the areas. And just, I mean, I, to be honest with you, I did it for a few years. I mean, I'm not claiming to be the expert or anything, but basically just run it by their noses and they eat it nine times out of ten. As a matter of fact, one one fish that Doug caught uh, a couple years ago, uh, he was coming off the uh, coming off the Rio Pier. You know, he's tired, he's been fishing his ass off all day, and he looks in the water. There's a nice 32 pounder, and it was almost on the beach. It was like, like he says, it was in three inches of water. And he about had a heart attack. He's like, oh my God, you know, it's right there, right on the edge of the water. So he drops the plastic down right in front of his face. The helmet doesn't do nothing. Then it kicks a little bit, and it's kind of cruising down the beach, so he takes off running that fast fish. You know, he's like, no way. So the next cast, all he said was he threw it down. He never saw anything happen. He just saw the fish take off. He never even saw it eat. That's how fast it ate. It just, that fast, and it was gone. And he was hauling ass on the beach. So he ended up getting a beautiful fish. I mean, that was the biggest one that I've ever seen any of us catch on the last. I'm just getting through this. <laughs> any other questions? Okay. That's it for me. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Right now, we're going to do the Six leader lines, 25 pound test, 25 yards.
best calico blend. Eight foot, I think it's still uh, 15 to 30, but it's eight foot. Eight five four, three seven four. Three seven four. Yeah. All right. Good carbon. Okay. Thank you guys for attending our first seminar, and the second one is gonna be surf fishing, starting at four o'clock. So if you guys just wanna hang out with us, you know, that's fine. And, you know, if you guys want some crackers?